Hello everyone, Dr. Matt Ed. Today we'll talk about echocardiogram and mode. These letters here, D, E, F, A, C, they signify the stages of the cardiac cycle. D is for end systole, E is for early opening, F is for mid diastolic closure, and A is for atrial systole when the leaflet is open again, and then C stands for closure of the mitral valve. So this is the MO through the mitral valve. Our objectives today are, we'll talk about what is end mode, we'll talk about the end mode through the mitral valve and its pathologies, we'll talk about the aortic valve and its pathologies with end mode. What is end mode? It depicts structures along the path of a single line of the ultrasound beam over time. It gives the best temporal resolution in identifying location and movement of structures. It's really good to look at SAM, or known as systolic anterior motion of the mitral valve, and also right ventricular diastolic collapse um, to assess for cardiac tamponade. Here is a picture of the MO through the mitral valve. Up here is the skin. This is the artery free wall, and the space is the right ventricle. Here we have the septum, which is labeled here, and then the LV. And within the mitral valve, we have anterior mitral valve leaflet, which is pointing to this area, and the posterior mitral valve leaflet is this area. And down here is the inferior lateral wall. And then we have the pericardium at the end. So in diastole, these mitral valves open. And gets close, and the anterior leaflet gets closer to the septum, and assistly the valves close, such as so. Next, we'll talk about the normal mitral valve through the end mode. So this is what the normal looks like. When we have diastole, so we have passive flow of blood, and still closed, but then the leaflet strip apart. So you can see that these are more apart as the blood flows through passively and then afterwards the blood in the LV cavity flows back a little bit so it makes the leaflet drift back together so we see this divot down here as the leaflets come back closer and during atrial contraction it forces the blood through the mitral valve and into the left ventricle which causes the leaflet to open back up again as you can see here and during LV systole, it forces the mitral valve leaflets to close back up. And then you see this leaflets coming closer together. And then you see these leaflets are closed. And atrial fibrillation, this is what normal MO through the mitral valve looks like. As you can see, there is no atrial contraction. So we lose the sec second peak here. As in AFib, there is no atrial contraction. This is mitral valve mitral stenosis with end mode. So similar to the normal end mode, you have first it's closed, and then as the blood begins to flow in diastole, the leaflets start to drift up. But here you can see that it only opens up a little bit. The posterior leaflet it's kind of close to the anterior leaflet because there's fusion of the posterior leaflet. The the thickened leaflets they move together. And slowly and if the patient's in sinus rhythm this is what you look this is what it looks like it's here there's atrial contraction and in AFib this is what it looks like as you use the atrial you lose the atrial kick this is mitral valve and other pathologies through the end mode the top three we already spoke about in left atrial myxoma the opening of the mitral valve is filled in with the mass. Here in Holcomb, we have the SAM. In Sicily, the anteriorly flipped mitral valve hits the septum. In mitral valve prolapse, the posterior leaflet looks like this. And if both leaflets, they look like this. And these are in systole. Posterior flail leaflet of mitral valve appears to be like that. It flows into the opening of the mitral valves. And aortic regurg, remember in diastole you have the aortic valves 
opening going backwards. So that affects the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve since it's very close to each other. So it causes, since they're, as the mitral valve is opening, the aortic valve is also opening as well. So that's why you get these fluttering effects. And if it's AR is very severe, you get a depression of the mitral valves or the elevation is less or the opening is less. Now we'll talk about the MO through the aortic valve and this is a cross section of what it looks like. So this is the normal end mode of the aortic valve. This is when the lines are closed, the leaflets are closed. Over here, here this area is when the leaflets are open and you see that it's a nice box. So that's the valve opening. On the posterior side we have the non-coronary cusp and the anterior side we have the right coronary cusp. And this is the aorta, the aorta. And in a bicuspid aortic valve, the line is shifted upwards as so. If there's aortic valve stenosis and it's calcified, the box is pretty much filled in. If there is aortic valve vegetation, you got some filling of the opening of the aortic valve. If there is a subaortic stenosis, you see a bump like this. And in hokum, it looks like this. And that's because if there's obstruction at the LVOT, then the leaflets will close earlier compared to normal as there is less blood flow there during the obstruction. And here is the aortic prosthesis, St. Jude's. You get this acoustic shadow down here. Here are the books that I use to, uh, for the information from this video. And if you are interested and you need further information, you can feel free to buy these books on Amazon. The link to Amazon is in my description. Thank you. These are my references. If you thought this video was helpful, please like, subscribe, and look out for my next video. Thank you for watching.